Hello, everybody. It is Al Knight. It is Brony time, and welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. Yeah, I'm. I apologize for the sudden and abrupt ending to the last part. Um, my sister came home from work unexpectedly to get something, uh, so I had to cut it off. Um, before she left, and then after she left, I played Persona 3 Reload, and I, I didn't get back to recording again. Uh, I, I'm, I weighed whether to re-record the entire episode, but the reveal we got was just so big that, uh, I didn't want to, uh, get rid of my blind reaction to it, my first reaction. Um, so, I just decided to upload the video as is. Now, what that reveal was, I usually mention, but I feel like I shouldn't in case, especially if someone has discovered me through clicking on this video. So, um, I will not be doing, um, last time, like I have been doing for the rest of the series. But, that's the end of that. Let's go ahead. We're gonna get, uh, right back into where we were. I believe we were talking to Magnify, uh, no, Valent, about Magnify's death. I have walked a difficult road these past seven years because you couldn't perform Magnify's repertoire. Do not be deceived. Valent's skills is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No, it was my partner who slowed me on my way. Zach Granbury. His rather well-performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or so I thought. Zach Granbury murdered our m mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crime. You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember, to, I remember it as if it were only yesterday. Yet that was not the way of it in the end. But while he vanished, the suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner, Zack, vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of a press said! I had no idea. Yet that very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. They cover the greatest magic show in history as if it were a vaudevillian distraction. And here must I stand, smiling at the ball. What am I if not a player in some fiendish farce? Might I suggest it's because you never made it clear what happened. Manaphy's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get an answer from you. I knew I'd be seeing these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping upon the stage. They must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. That sounds an awful lot like something I heard seven years ago. Interesting to see the Magatama return in this way. Ask what you will, you'll get nothing from me. I'm as much a part of this affair as you are now. I have to know what happened. For seven long years, I have endured. Now finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Fallon. But right now, I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That shake is up, Fallon. I wouldn't be so sure about those mirrors. Not as long as I have this. The transferal of rights. And what might that be? I see it bears the grammary seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnify's miracles. What? Jack Grammary. He wrote this! What? He passed everything to his daughter! Juicy Enigmar, 
Actually, she's officially my daughter these days. Preposterous, Zack! Zack is gone! Vanished into the void! This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the notary can testify to this. Uh... Why? Why? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived and thrown to the dead? You're not the only one with that problem. But he shot Magnifi. Yes, it was Zack. It was. And then he left. My career as a magician fell into darkness. Do you think there might be some way out of it? Say, if you could prove Zack Grammar, he shot Magnifi. Was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Valent. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnus E. Cranberry? Zack's Confession I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zack Gramry wrote one more thing before passing on. This, but this is a confession, in which he admits to the killing of Magnifique Gramry. See, all according to your plan. I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fool the audience, give them a fleeting dream. Yet it seems the tables have turned. Now I am the audience, believing the deceptious I have wrought upon myself. Zack wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. Alaka! Alaka zooms! That was terrible. Uh. Do you know that this confession is nothing but lies? Yes, it is my opinion that Zack Grammary killed no one. And you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, then the one who remains is guilty. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. So he vanished to protect me, his partner. <laughs> a stirring tale, tis true. Did you shoot Magnifi Grammary in the forehead? If I had, and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, perchance? Do as you will. There is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor Magnifi's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed hold of me. I knew it. Sir Valent Grammary did kill the great Magnifi. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright. But it was not I who shot my mentor. Well, what? But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There wasn't another disciple, was there? Another disciple, such as? I don't know. Knack and talent grammary, maybe? The wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you figured it out by now? If it wasn't Zack or Valent who shot Magnifi, then it had to be the only other person at the scene, which means... Wait. You don't mean... Yes. The great Magnifi Grammary himself. So Magnifi Grammary committed suicide. You find it hard to believe? To be honest, I hadn't even imagined it as a possibility. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I... I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room, the old man called out to me. So you spoke with Magnifi Grammar? Yes. This is why I knew what ha he had done. And if he transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner, Zach Grammarie, not me. I see. And I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. Huh? 
My crime was, in a way, more serious than that of murder. Well, what? Your crime? Is Alan Cranberry confessing something to me? What could be more serious than murder? You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There are no secrets between partners. It was easy to find out. That was when I understood Magnifique's plan. You wanted to die by one of your hands. Little did I expect it had anything to do with the right to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. The little demon whispering inside my heart. The demon? Let me confess, I had intended to shoot Magnifique. And? And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? what? That night, I prepared something before going to Magnifique's hospital room. Which was? IV fluid, of course. I'd seen it on an earlier visit. If Zack did not shoot, I would do the deed. Then I would use the IV liquid to place the murder on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon of my heart fled when the moment came, but then Magnifi called me back. I am sorry, Fate, Valent. I am giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please, help him, if you can. I left the room, and then I stopped. The shock of what I had just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that fateful gunshot. Manifri Grammary killing himself. Then the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frame him, and the magic will be yours. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the prints. Then I used the syringe to add the IV liquid I brought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. And if he died, and he framed Zack for his murder. As planned, indeed. Of course, the core outcome was different than what I had anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed true? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but... Yes? I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valent. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Knight. Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're going to turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave. My friends, my performance rights, my magic. I've had enough of vanishing acts. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find I was wrong. For Zack Grammary was alive. Well, not anymore. And now it occurs to me. What if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I know. We never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Um, her. The mind races and the mouth flaps on. My apologies. Forget this matter. I can only hope that the day will come when I again meet my partner, Zack Grammary. Then I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I am glad we had this chance to talk. Thank you. Zack Grammary, Shady Smith, whichever name you prefer, he is no longer with us. The truth revealed in that trial was only a sliver, and the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another life. I knew what I had to do to push back the darkness for good, and it would involve paying that man a visit. Well, you guys, it's time for our last, um, our last trip.
Sorry, sir. Professor Christoph Gavin is currently occupied. I see. Do you know when he'll be finished? Um, well... Could you go find out? Uh, certainly, sir. Uh, please wait here a moment. My apologies to the guard, but there's something I need to see. And I believe it is this letter. There it is. The yellow envelope. And the sender is True Misham. I was right. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. If this is the last letter that Drew Misham wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do, in fact. Here goes. Let's see if this answer. A troquinine spray finds ev everything. There we go. So this was Drew Misham, Misham's messenger of death. It was the stamp, all right. No mistaking it. And his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. Gotcha. Finally, decisive evidence. What's this? A burglar in jail? Gavin! I didn't know you moonlighted and lost me, right? Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Vera Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? There are no known survivors of atrocinian poisoning, but it never hurts to hope. Okay, I'll be leaving now then. Right, wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Oh, sorry, forgot I had it. Many thanks. I think that's the end of uh, our journey into the past. We've now seen all the clues in this case. Clues I gathered over seven long years. Now it is time. Every story has an ending. We've come to the final chapter. The final trial. Find the truth. You're the only ones who can. This is weird. This is weird. <laughs> Welcome to court. Seven years, all leading to one verdict. Verdict which you must decide. Is the defendant Vir Misham, Misham innocent or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial waits. Are you ready to begin? Whew! Here we go, guys! We've come to the end! It's, it's kind of hard to think so. Something inside me, rising, surfacing. Something important. Lost long ago. It's close now, so close. Dang, this is getting intense. I haven't felt an intensity this much since, well, every final trial is pretty intense. That's a lie. That's a lie. That is a total lie. Court is now in session for the trial of Vera Misha. The defense is ready, Your Honor. 
Prosecution's ready to rock. Prosecutor Gavin, how is the defendant via Misham's condition? Acute anthraconine poisoning, according to her physician. She could die at any time. Thus, her absence from the courtroom today. What? They can't put on a trial without her being here. It is, it, it is unusual. We should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. They can't delay the trial any longer. But they risk having no one left to try. A trial without a verdict can only cause grief. The records of this case and experience tell us this. Apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Right. If Vera dies, the trial will be cancelled. I'm not going to let that happen. Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtain all these years. I'm going to get Vera her innocent verdict while there's still time. Very well, your opening statement, Prosecutor Gavin. The prosecution's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Misham succumb to the poison? Because she couldn't live with the guilt of what she had done. But Vera was poisoned with anthraquinine, the exact same poison that took her father's life. What better confession could you ask for? Being the killer, she would have had no access to the she would have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather hard to come back. Mm hmm, that is true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could have had our verdict yesterday. Well, Mr. Justice, you have no objections. I see no reason to postpone a verdict. What we need to worry about isn't the verdict, but the trial itself. The defense hold that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you have to prove something. She was in court giving her testimony before us. How do you propose her killer poisoned her? Oh, and incidentally, it would be nice if you told us who her mystery killer was. The prosecution's objection is sustained. I ask the defense to prove its claims to this court. Tell us how Vera Misham was poisoned. I've got two things to prove here. Who did it and how. Which to hit first. Well, showing how is always important. How did the killer poison Vera Misham? I will focus first on the method used. Hmm, any comments before we begin, Prosecutor Gavin? Not a bottle or container of the poison was found on the defendant's body. I see, so the vector of poisoning is unknown. Is the defense prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Misham? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Misham? Well, we discovered this. It's the nail polish, because it's the same nail. Because I think we. If I remember correctly, she was given this nail polish by obviously Christoph Gavin. And it would make sense if he was behind it all. <coughs> Watch this. My, what a beautiful bottle. Like to give whoever designed that a hand. Is that nail polish? Hmm, it's colorless. Ah. Something the matter? N no, nothing. N nothing at all. So the killer put the poison in this bottle and made her drink it. As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this is nail polish. Nail polish? It's like paint for nails. Know any women with red nails? Ah, my wife has red nails. I see. She's been, she's been painting them all this time. Let's recall yesterday. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? Court is now back in session. Vera seems pretty. Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit. Of biting her nails. Her nails? Ah! Prosecutor Gavin. When the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? I fell I Bailiff! Have them check the defendant's nails at once! 
Mr. Justice. Yes? Do you know who did this? Do you know who put poison in that nail polish? Yes. That bottle belongs to Vila Michu? Why do you ask? Know someone else who might have a bottle like this? No. Just checking. It's your brother, dude. Mr. Justice? You are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chatter. You realize the weight of this accusation. Here, let me show you. Understood, Your Honor, no problem. I know what I'm doing this time. And let us ask, who poisoned Vera Misham via her nail polish? Christoph Gavin. From the very beginning. What's this? Christoph Gavin. What's your game? My bro, there's no way he could do something like that. You should know that better than anyone else. Indeed. He is behind bars. I know. However, that doesn't mean it was impossible to do what he did. What? What? Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. Could have been yesterday. Could have been a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps it was seven years ago. But, but, Krishoff Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl. It's simply inconceivable. Inconceivable! Prosecutor Gavin doesn't seem to think so. That face tells me one thing. Krishoff Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. Hmm, well, Prosecutor Gavin, if you feel there's a clear and pressing need, then we may have to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay, the defense wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph Gavin take the stand. Bailiff, begin proceedings to call a special witness. The witness is Christoph Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at Central Prison. Ah, uh, your honor, how nice to see you again. It has been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? Just realize, I'm not every day I'm summoned from my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you already know, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Ah, Mr. Justice. I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. Ah, why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? Stiff up your lip, Apollo. You can do it. Does this bottle look familiar? Area Doni nail polish? Why, yes, I used it myself. As did the late defendant. I hear. She's not dead yet! And, was there something concerning this bottle you wished to ask me about? I admit I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste, indeed. This nail polish was how Vera Misham was poisoned. Antrocanine, was it? You're well informed about the case, Mr. Gavin. Even in solitary, much comes to my desk, and I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier, maybe you can explain this. You're being accused again. By him, again. Ah. And, you agree with this accusation, do you? Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? I actually, cl I will actually be happy if Clavier had like actually nothing to do with it, which it seems to be where this game is going. Like, I mean, I, I do like that we have a prosecutor who, you know what? I'll, I'll talk to you guys at the end. I'm planning on doing uh, a thoughts video on this game once we finished. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it then. I'll just have to write a note to remind myself because 
I'm terrible at remembering stuff, of course. Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? Christoph Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. Charges against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin. You are suspected of the poisoning of the defendant via Michel. Please testify on this matter to the court. Owning the same nail polish does not murder make. I have been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. Prosecution case holds she poisoned her father and attempted to poison herself. Surely you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father too. Well, I'm afraid the defense's claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the Meshams. Isn't that so, Mr. Justice? Very well, Mr. Justice, begin your cross-examination. Examination. I'm accusing Christoph Gavin, my ex-boss. But I know he poisoned the Meshams. The question is, when could he have done it? Not to mention, why? Gotcha, you little hand. It was you who killed Drew Misha. A bluff worthy of your new mental, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? But you see, I saw it. Right when you said her father, too. Your hand tends to naturally. An old devil appeared to give me the news. And... Let's assume, for the sake of argument, that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? And tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Ah. Ah. Then I must be very talented to deep. You see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th. But I was already in my solitary confinement cell at Central Prison. If it's not an alibi, then I don't know what is. But you found a way, all the same. And I found it too. This is how you poison Mr. Misha. It's this commemorative stamp. I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Misha died, he was seen writing a letter. Atrocrinine was found on this stamp, Mr. Gavin. So am I to understand this stamp was the murder weapon? Yes, you are. Oh, and yes, this stamp was found in your prison cell! That is all, Your Honor. Order, order, order! Poison on the back of that stamp! After Drew Misham was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness cell. Witnesses cell? Phoenix Wright. Daddy? That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew Misham write you a letter. That's how you killed him! What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spark Brushel's testimony. Well, that's the thing, see? After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp. A so-called posted stamp. End quote. 
he was looking for a step. Ego, he had no intention of using a step. What are you getting at? Why I'm arriving it is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was a mere coincidence that he used it that night. That would seem to be the case. Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence? <laughs> he does have a point. How would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? Without that, he couldn't have planned the murder. But what? Oh, come on. Really, Clavier, you should be seeing through these weak spy bluffs by now. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Misha when he used that stamp that night? Least of all, Christoph Gavin locked away in his cell. Well? It seems that the defense has run out of things to say. You assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. Defense's bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, sir, Christoph. Clavier? Honestly, I wanted to believe you, but the defense wasn't trying to get away with a bluff. You, you, Christoph! What, what are you saying, Prosecutor Gavin? Air foreheads? What was your accusation again? Huh? Oh, it was that. This poison stamp killed M Drew Misham, yeah? To which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Misham would use the stamp. Yes, that's right, which is why it couldn't have been planned. Tell me, it needs to be planned. Why? Uh, why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Misham died by that stamp. That's all. Coincidence? Christoph, you tried to slip out from under his accusation by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, what is it? What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Christoph. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. But Mr. Gavin, that's interpermissible testimony! Very well, I shall take his claim head on then. Justice. But what? You accused me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then, allow me to ask you, what possible reason could I have to kill a painter? Apollo motive? He's talking about a motive! Mm, indeed. It's hard to see how an attorney would want, come to kill, want to kill a painter. Now here's something why he didn't bring up the motive from the very beginning. Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. So what does it mean? It means there might be a weak spot. Maybe I have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder. This is vital, if not the most vital element in this case. Please consider this when making your statement. I'd say it's about this vital. That's pretty vital. Well, Mr. Justice, I'm going through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. Then let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Misha? This red envelope. Christoph Gavin's motive becomes clear. When we consider why the stamp came to Drew Misha's studio in the first place. And why was that? Forgery, Your Honor. Go back seven years. Drew Misham accepts his first job creating forged evidence. I've seen that before. Paid from a diary, wasn't it? Magnifique Grammarie's diary. Ah, when Attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge, yes. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes. But did Mr. Wright request the forge? But did Mr. Wright request the forgery be made? That was never proven! The defense attorney on the case was Phoenix Wright, who, other than him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it. And why would they? Just out of curiosity, do you remember this letter? This is the first page. And this is the second. Those were presented in court yesterday. The center was sent to Drew Misham by the client who requested his forgery. 
The enclosed stamp was none other than the poison commemorative stamp. Jumi Shum drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was already seven years old. Seven years old? The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. He tried to erase anything and anyone with connections to the forgery to keep them from talking. But he made a mistake. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. The killer's time bomb was delayed. The poison stamp was sealed within a glass frame, where it sat for seven whole years. Air foreheads. Do you understand what you're telling us? The one who schemes the, the forged diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp. And it was Phoenix Light who presented the forged evidence seven years ago. According, according, adding the two statements together, the one who schemed to kill Drew Misha was none other than Phoenix Wright. Objection! Sorry, but that's not how this is going to go down. Oh, then how will it go down? I checked through the records on that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. Oh, old boy! Um, uh, here! What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. And one more thing. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I see the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. I understand I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. He didn't have time to request a forgery. The day before? Now here's a question. Just who was Shady Enigmar's previous defense attorney? No. Oh. This can't all be. But it is all true. There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. It was you, Christoph Gavin. Order, order, order. What, what is the meaning of this? Witness, I mean defendant, a former lawyer. Let me begin by denying this. It's easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin, and impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly did you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Mm -hmm, that would be difficult. I'm afraid this line of inquiry won't yield. Air foreheads. Are you sure you don't have evidence? What's wrong with Prosecutor Cannon? He looks clammy. Evidence! Evidence that shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that forgery seven years ago. Clavia, just prove it! Clear up these doubts now, I swear I've lost this case! You must have thought of some evidence. Apollo! Prosecutor Gavin looks like he's in physical pain, that darkness. I have to pull that darkness out of him, and proof is the only way I can. What proves Christos Gavin's link to Drew Misha? Well, Mr. Justice, you claim Christoph Gavin requested a forgery of Drew Misha seven years ago. Prove it! it can be proven. Simply ridiculous. Why even discuss it? This evidence does not- Are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. Then, I say we give him the benefit of the doubt. Very well, but if you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. Your Honor, you do the defense and injustice. Mr. Justice is clearly passionate about his claim. Should the penalty not match his passion? I haven't given a penalty like this in a long time. 
Well, Mr. Justice, fine, Your Honor. All I have to prove is any kind of link. Something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew Misham. And I have something that clearly does the job. Very well, Mr. Justice, present your evidence. Show us the link between our witness and Drew Misham. It's this. His final letter. This evidence proves there's a link. That scrap of paper, I'm afraid I can't let you submit that. Is there some problem? There is. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm? Hey, that's Daddy's handwriting! Mr. Wright's handwriting! What's the meaning of this? Ah, I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell, except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright. When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. Mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habit. Well, if it isn't a forgery... Well, if it's a forgery, it's not a very good one. The handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. Reproduction? Mr. Wright visited Christoph Gavin's cell. He brought with him a small video camera. What? He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin, and the contents of your personal mail. Regardless... This mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video, a man with no authority whatsoever claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex-attorney suspected of forgery. Hmm. Prosecutor Gavin? Prosecutor Gavin? As embarrassing as this is for me to say, I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor, your decision, please. The defense claim is denied. What? When the actual evidence is permitted in a court of law, please remove the defense's evidence from the record. Better luck next time, Justice. Well, we've certainly taken a detour from our cross-examination. The defense appears to be lacking proof. I'm forced to end the cross-examination of Christoph Gavin at this point. Apollo, do something! I'm thinking, but without evidence, I don't have anything I can use on him. Very well, this ends the special witness's cross-examination. This is show's over, yet the crowd screams for more. Only now do I understand why. Prosecutor Gavin? Frankly, I'm relieved. This has been bothering me for seven whole years. And I'm tired of the whole youthful angst scene. Now's our chance. Let's clean out the family closet, eh, Christoph? Clavier, you're spinning out of control. Calm yourself before say something you'll regret. Spinning out of whose control? Mine? Or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you built. Your reputation as a prosecutor. Your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. Apollo, did you see that? He's trying to press Prosecutor Gavin. Prosecutor Gavin, try to remember what's really important to you. You'll amuse me, Air Foreheads. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't. Not even once. Seven years ago... Finally, you just couldn't resist, could you, Air Right? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Might I request if you put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. Okay, I'm not reading this. I'm, I'm done reading flashbacks. The game's almost over. 
I'm familiar with the trial. I've watched the video several times. Yes. You have watched the video several times. And we will cover that next time on Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Once again, I'm very sorry to uh, end this so abruptly here, but um, I think it's pretty clear we're reaching the end of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. So um, I do want to split this video here because I'm not going over my hour and 30 minute mark um, because just because it's ending and I want to make sure the next video is like not too short and and quite useless to do but yeah here we go uh clavier only cares about the truth and uh i think we are going to get that truth in the next video but until then thank you all for watching please have a like comment and subscribe to bony time for more content especially more apollo justice ace attorney trilogy also make sure to share this video far and wide so it can reach as many eyes as possible it's been doing very well the past few weeks and uh, I will see you all next time.